Welcome to Fueling Your Legacy, hosted by Samuel Knickerbocker. Each week, we expose the faulty foundational mindsets of the past and rebuild a new, stronger foundation essential in creating your legacy. We've got a lot of work to do, so let's get started. Welcome back to Fuel Your Legacy, and today we're doing a book review on probably one of the most influential books I've read in a long time, for sure. I mean, it ranks up there with uh, some of my, my crowd favorites, The Anatomy of Peace, um, The Four Tendencies, Outwitting the Devil, and then uh, I, I've heard of this book multiple times. I don't know why it took me so long to read it. Um, but man, I'm so glad that I did. It's called The Untethered Soul. Um, this week, we're, we're talking about how to really find yourself. Uh, on Friday, we're going to have Keith Crossley on, and, and he's going to share um, a lot of what he did in the process of finding himself, and what was that process like, um, how did he overcome some of the, the distractions, the pain, the the, how do you move into the pain? Um, how does he really understand who he is, what his purpose is, and where he's moving forward? Uh, so super, super excited for that. Now, when it comes to this book, so uh, as you may know, as I've talked about multiple times on the show, I love talking about things in context of natural law, in context of um, this is a universal language that everybody is, it doesn't matter where you're from, what creed, what, what family, what uh, country, language, gender, um, race, it doesn't matter. Like there's just some things that are true throughout no matter where you go. And being able to create a conversation and, and create a language in which that is possible is one, an incredible talent and skill uh, from the author's perspective that he was able to create and, and accurately describe um, in a way that the average a person is really going to understand what he's saying and help them gain the feeling and desire to change the ins inspiration, not just motivation, but inspiration to actually get up and do something about what they learned. That is an amazing skill, and I think this author nailed it right on the head, and I'm so, so grateful that I listened to this book. Now, what is the book about? The whole book is really about um, the, the concept of really identifying who you are. Now, when I was on my uh, mission with, for the LDS Church, I, I don't remember. I listened to some... Um, It was just an audio recording or something and talked about um, if you were to just close your eyes and really identify where you are, um, what that would be like. Well, this book really goes into depth there and kind of dissects that philosophy, puts it into everyday language that, that's understandable to the point that you walk away and you what you achieve out of listening to this book is the ability to remain in a complete state of peace no matter what no matter what's going on around you to be able to recognize that what's going on what's being said how you're feeling um how and I, even even the the fact of saying like even the statement of saying how you are feeling is is almost contradictory to the book itself because the idea is that you when we're talking about the true you you are completely intangible. One of the one of the things that I love most about this book is the the concept of um, if you're sitting there thinking about okay, this is me, right? If you if I was going to have you describe who you are, um, you'd describe all the things you currently are um, demonstrating or or embodying, even. However, is not. Aren't you the same person who was 12 years old, four years old, five years old? I mean, I have memories of myself um, crawling in on the second floor. So I guess I'll set this up so you kind of understand uh, what was going on. Our house that we moved into when I was basically brand new, barely born, uh, was just a wreck. It was not finished. 
There was holes everywhere. There were, it was a two-story building. It had been condemned because the foundation wasn't actually designed for two stories. And so when we purchased it, we had to go in and reconstruct the whole foundation uh, without deconstructing the house. So reconstruct the foundation. And the, the, the second floor, there was no stairs up to the second floor. And so we would have a ladder, uh, just a two-rung ladder that would climb up and then we had a big insulation thing that went over the stairwell to separate and insulate the, the top floor that was still open to the elements from the bottom floor that we were hoping was closed off enough from the elements to protect us. Okay, so I'm cr up on the second floor and we're crawling. So it's not quite rafters, but they're floor joists with OSB on the floor, but there was holes in it. And I was crawling. My dad was in front of me. My my brother Gabriel was behind me and we are crawling across this floor. This is what I remember. And all of a sudden my dad is crawling and all of a sudden I fall through the floor, just like that <sighs> land on the couch. My, my mom and, and siblings, they're folding laundry, but I land smack dab on the couch in the middle of the laundry. Now how that hole was right above the laundry and all that, how it worked, I don't know, but I could not have been um, just because of the other things, the other timelines that I'm, I'm fairly certain of and pictures, I could not have been more than two, maybe three years old, right? However, in my mind's eye, right, in the, in the you part of me, um, I can see all that happening. I can still experience it. Another experience that happened when I was a very young child, uh, I don't remember the exact uh, age of this, but we had like a push pin board on the, uh, glued to the back of our our uh, front door so that when you shut it, that's where it was like our bulletin board well when i was young my my younger brother afton he was a baby and so i could have been let's see he was born in 96 i was not born in 93 so i would have only been maybe three years old three or four years old and uh, while my parents were out at work we had some uh staple guns that you'd use for carpeting or putting down uh tar paper on a roof something like that well, we put Afton, I say we, all, we were all there, but my oldest two brothers, they put Afton in a onesie and we stapled the onesie all around him to the door. So literally, I mean, we didn't staple him and his skin, but literally he was hanging from the door by staples in his onesie. And, and that's where Afton was. So you could like shut the door and he was hanging on the door, right? So these experiences, I remember them vividly, like they happened yesterday, and they didn't. They happened at least 23 years ago, but as far as I'm concerned and the me, I'm omnipresent. I'm, I'm just as present in that experience of when I was three years old as I am today, that you has no age. It's ageless, um, and so when you can separate the you part of yourself, the true you, from everything that's going on in life, it gives you context to really um, in the scriptures, you see, you see these phrases like, and it came to pass, nevertheless. Um, and so it was, right? So the whole idea is things move on and this, the way life is today isn't going to be eternal. What's eternal is the true you. And the true you has the ability at this point in time to uh, embody a human body, to control a human body but that true you is not your human body. It is not even your thoughts. It is not even your feelings, right? So that's what this book really helps you identify. And then it walks you through a process of these experiences that we have on a daily basis and the thought processes and how we talk to ourselves and how we talk to others, how we treat ourselves and how we treat others. Uh, it walks you through how, the, how you're thinking and then what are some ways, what are some actionable things that you can actually do to shift how you're thinking about life, how you're thinking about this, these things that are hard in life, these hard circumstances. Maybe somebody um, passed away. Maybe some, maybe you were abused, right? Or you feel like you were abused, and you, so you got offended, and um, you you decide to hold a grudge. You decide to hold on to all this negative energy, uh, and it just doesn't help. And so one of the things that they mention in this book is to really lean into the pain. They describe it as if it was a claw. Okay, and the pain would naturally pass through the, the claw of hands, but because 
you decide to resist the pain, it actually gets, the pain gets caged inside of your soul or your, your being. And there's, you chose not to let go of the pain, not to experience pain and let it go, but to hold on to it as a form of resisting. You put up a wall and said, no, no pain can go through me. And because of that, now all that pain that needed to go through you, it's just getting backed up and backed up and backed up and it's damned. And so then uh, like all those emotions, they're just damned up inside of you. And as, as a result, we become more unhappy, more depressed, more anxious, and, and takes even less and less things to really set us off and, and create these big spectacles out of us because we just are lost um, as to how to deal with and how to move forward. And that, that process really is a result of not really understanding how that pain needs to pass through us. So the idea is to really lean into the pain, allow all of the pain to fill your body for the microsecond that it happens. Once you experience all the pain, generally the pain leaves within seconds. Pain only sticks around when we hold, choose to hold on to it in a form of resistance. So uh, just that's one little thing that they mentioned. I honestly, um, this yeah, man, this book is one that is really difficult to summarize without giving away um, the, the journey of listening to it or reading it. And I think the journey of listening to it and reading it is a, a major aspect of how you might actually learn to apply it in your life. So I'm not going to talk too much about it. I definitely uh, am super excited for uh, Keith and, and what he's been able to share on it, the insight um, that, that you're going to gain from listening to Keith's story and how he this was one of the books that he used as kind of a guide for him to experience uh, true peace and, and fulfillment in his life and how he chose to uh, go through a, just a, a process of understanding, do I really want to feel these feelings? Does that internal you, does it really want to feel all of the feelings that are negative and painful and hurtful? Or does it say, oh, I don't really want to feel those right now. Let's let them go. And, uh, being able to create a habit out of that is is crucial for myself. I did this unwittingly. I didn't even know, I, or I didn't have a language to describe what I was doing as I was going through this process for myself. Um, really deep meditation, focusing on hey, what is what? Who do I want to be? Identifying my identity. When I get up and speak uh, to a crowd of people, one of my core messages that I share is uh, learning to identify your identity. Once you identify with your identity then we can actually start to plan for how can we create and live this identity. Once we're creating and living it, then we're able to leave a legacy of who we truly were meant to be. But until we do the work and go through the pain, go through the sorrow, go through the joy, go through the happiness of really identifying your identity, then we're, we're going to continue to struggle to know how to show up. We're going to not be able to be in alignment with who we are as individuals or, or, Children, parents, siblings, coworkers, business owners, right? Whatever it is that we choose, whatever we're choosing to do in our life at that moment in time, um, it's harder to excel and really, really do the best job of that if if you aren't living your identity. I was out golfing with a few friends last week, and um, we were talking about at what point were their businesses going through major shifts, or even some of their businesses crumbling. And it wasn't as much about who these individuals were, what they liked, what they didn't like, what standards they chose to live their life by, but it was when they started to profess or, or attempt to live a life that they thought others expected them to live rather than living, who, uh, living with their true identity of what they knew they wanted to be. And um, that is why, I mean, I've talked about this multiple times on my podcast. I talk about it on Facebook, talk about it on, on Instagram. My communication style is not for everybody, right? I totally get that. And I, I love that, right? Some people are like, oh, well, you'd be so much more successful if you were kinder, if you, I don't think so. I, I'm not saying that everybody needs to be like me, but I honestly, uh, my communication style, the, the, the you part of me and how it chooses to communicate and how it chooses to express itself I believe that that is uniquely mine. And if I tried to express myself, if I tried to live a life out of integrity with who that is, I would fail. I would not be successful. I wouldn't um, have 
the, the relationships that I have. I wouldn't have the wife that I have. I wouldn't have the children that I have, right? If I chose to try and be something that I'm not, then it wouldn't work. And, and, and that's why I am a more encouragement of identifying who you truly are rather than, well, yeah, you can adopt this habit. You can adopt this habit. You can become more like this. You can, you can train yourself to, to operate your body a certain way. But as long as it's out of integrity with the inner you of, and, and who you really are, then it's going to be very difficult and ultimately leads to, in the long run, uh, in, in my experience, uh, intense anxiety, depression, uh, in some cases suicide, as unfortunate as that is. Um, at, it comes up in malnutrition, whether that's bulimia, anorexia, right? You're, you're attempting to control any little thing that you can because your, your own identity is not being expressed. And so it's trying to get out in, in the form of, hey, can I choose one thing for myself? And it becomes very unhealthy. Most people act out in very unhealthy ways rather than healthy ways. So um, if you're looking for peace, if you're looking for pure joy, ecstasy, um, the most wonderful feelings that you could ever imagine, um, I honestly think there outside of your, your religious books, which I think are absolutely important, whether that's your Bible, Quran, uh, Torah, Book of Mormon, whatever it is that you choose as your religious text, great, read that, study it, and, and imbibe that. But then understand that this book has the ability to explain certain aspects that are all there in all the, those books that I've read as far as scripturally, they're all there, but they're not necessarily, because those books are in many cases, almost ancient books, right? They're written in a language pattern that's not today's language. When you're able to hear that um, this book, The Untethered Soul, I think is going to be one of my top five that I would recommend to everybody reading this to really learn how to identify who you are and receive a lot of peace, joy, and confidence in your life. So uh, super, super excited for uh, Friday uh, with Keith Crossley again. Uh, it's actually one of the longest podcasts that I've ever recorded just because I was so enthralled by the conversation. And, and again, this isn't to speak badly of anybody um, that, I've, that I've ever done a podcast with, but I honestly, to this point, out of all the hundred and some odd podcasts that I've done, I don't think I've had a more enjoyable podcast. I'm definitely not a more enjoyable guest other than, than Keith. And, and that's not to put anybody else down. I just really, really connected with Keith. And so I'm super excited. I hope that you take the time to really listen and maybe re-listen to this, this upcoming episode because I know how much impact it can have on your life when applied. So with that being said, we'll catch you next time on Fuel Your Legacy. Thanks for joining us today. If what you heard resonated with you, please like, comment, and share on social media. Tag me so I can give you a shout out on the next episode. And thanks to all those who have left a review. It helps spread the message of what it really takes to build a legacy that lasts. Catch you next time on Feeling Your Legacy.